Uh, hi, everybody. Um, it's uh, it's Mark Rushton of MarkRushtonGallery.com, and that joke didn't work. Yeah, I was trying to <clears throat> trying to blow up my. Uh, we were doing a little surgery tonight here. Oh yeah, gonna drink in the kefir with the mm, nitrile glove on. So last night, I was working on this. Spun bonded olefin here, added a little bit of, uh, I wanted to redo the foreground here. And then it struck me. Why don't I turn this into kind of a book painting collage? Right? Why not? I mean, it fits. It fits perfectly, right? Mm-hmm. So we're going to do that. So we got a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of, we'll butter the back here. This is going to be the back. Get this on here. Man, I had a, I had a pretty good day. I got it. I got it. Well, hold on here. Let's do this off camera here. Just in case I make a mess. I have it all over the, well, maybe I could. I don't know. Um, man, I had a lot going on today. Didn't get everything done, but I got a lot of stuff done. That's good. Or, or progress. That's good. Mainly with the music stuff. And uh, some day job stuff. And, you know, see where all that goes. All right. Let's get... Oh, premature... Get it on there. Ugh. Clean my hands up. Just the yes paste. Get that out of there. Now we're just going to kind of mount that on here to the spun bonded olefin. Anytime you mount something onto spun bonded olefin, <clears throat> it needs to be a starch based adhesive. And yes, paste uh, is a starch based adhesive. Might have to tweak those edges and corners. We'll worry about that later. <clears throat> of course, what are we going to use to? For this side here, and I'm I'm a little worried that it's gonna soak it up and kind of curl, but I'll deal with that if it happens, which it's it's going to. So let's just go and I think this one's about running out. There we go. Put some ink on there. Oh, we have a comment here from Mr. Mr. Bradley, did you solve that equation first? Uh, <clears throat> no, I did not have a, I did not have a gun to my head. <laughs> I couldn't solve that if I had a gun to my head. Oh my God. <clears throat> if anybody can solve it, uh, I'll give them this painting. How about that? <laughs> Something like that. I look at this man substituting this and see I can't even read it because it's a microphone. We compare finally in accordance with EQ for when we transform this 95th centile of the F distribution. Oh my god. What does that mean? Does that mean that does that mean that the robots are going to write our term papers? Is this what the, is that what that means? Or does that mean 90 minutes from New York to Paris? <laughs> Spandex jackets, one for everybody. There we go. That looks a little better. But <clears throat> we're not done yet abusing this book. That's kind of interesting. Now what I want to be able to do is kind of tie in 
that uh, painted, you know, landscape thing there that we had that I had going on. So let's get to work on that, huh? Covering it up. I know it's really kind of an odd thing, this sort of collage work or whatever, but man, I kind of dig it. It's all right. It's expanding. It's getting outside my uh, my comfort zone. I certainly have not really done anything like this before, and I I just happened upon it, and I saw those books, and all I could think was, man, those are just going to be thrown out. I'll I'll take them away from all that. I'll turn them in a little works of art. <clears throat> Maybe not such a bad thing. And what I want with regard to the uh, equation here is uh, I want to I want to kind of seep through a little bit. That'd be fine. A little bit of it. Hints and allegations. Bits here and there. So this will probably be a multi-nighter. As computers get smarter, humans get dumber. That's an equation. That's <clears throat> that's actually a, that's a, a, a that, that would be a new adage, right? It's like Moore's law, right? Or uh, Brooks's law. <laughs> you know, Fred Brooks who recently died. <clears throat> what of his book? Uh, the 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 um oh hold on here i actually have this book right here uh the mythical man month by fred brooks he he died just like a month or two ago this is the uh <clears throat> this is what well, it says essays on software engineering it's a bible of software engineering it's the bible uh because you know everybody knows about it few have read it and nobody goes by it <laughs> and uh let me get all this in here and you've got yeah the second system effect that's pretty good i've been <clears throat> i've been involved in that a few times over the years here you know where you you build a software system and then you realize, oh, you get, you need to build another one because the first one sucked. And, uh, and then there's the, the, the main part of this, which was what, uh, which is Brooks's law, which is adding uh, manpower to a software project that, that is late, makes it even later. And that has also been described as nine women cannot make a baby in one month. <laughs> Murphy's law, Moore's law, right? So this is a great book. It's it's a little it's a little thick in here, but uh, it's got. And then he came out with a uh, further essay on it in a, in a later chap uh, later edition called um, "No Silver Bullet." That's also, I mean, that's that's all you need to know. There's no silver bullet. But my God, if you if you listen to the oh my gosh, if you listen to the uh the the, the clickbait headlines lately, um, uh, my God. Though every job will be taken over by AI. Listen, guys, you can't even get your self-driving cars to not crash. So get back to me when you, I don't know, cured cancer first, right? <laughs> geeks. What's the matter with you geeks? Guys just got your asses kicked by a bunch of nerds. <laughs> uh, John Goodman is the football coach. Revenge of the Nerds. Yeah, so uh what do I want to do with that? Oh, you know what? 
add a little pink. This would be like a really, this would be like that, that ice cream cone that the, your kid should just definitely not eat. We'll mix it in there real nice. Yeah. I don't know. What do I know? I don't know anything. Fred Brooks. Nobody listens to him. Why would anybody listen to him? What did he do? I, I He just ran the system 360. Uh, project back in the mid 1960s the ibm system 360 what was the big thing on that it was like uh something about is it a six bit or eight bit computing and 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 because somebody was able to figure that out we were able to have lowercase and uppercase. It was something like that, if I'm not mistaken. I'd, I'd have to go dig out my uh, computer history there. I don't know. I like how the words kind of Look how the words kind of just hint, hint a little bit here, you know? Throw in a little bit of this too. I need to, it, it should not be so, should not be so bright. I'll scrape it off. I had a post of my workspace and somebody, somebody, I think they were just joking, but they were just like, hey, it should be messier. No, I, this, it, this is messy enough for me as it is. Why would it, why would it be messier? Artists should be messy. Is that it? Oh yeah. We should all be crazy too. And we should cut our ear off and be drunks and slit our wrists and, Right? We're just going to draw naked people all the time. That's it. That's it. We're done. <laughs> Crazy. So I, you know, I don't mean to take too, too much offense by that, but I, uh, I like to keep uh, this studio is not clean at all. But that, you know, somebody has a sloppier studio. I mean, yeah, that's fine. Point of pride. I, I don't know. As I get older, I just want to be more minimalist. I mean, it's like, you know. Hold on here. This thing's going to fall off. Yeah, everything's going to fall off. This whole studio here is precariously balanced, right? Oh, this isn't going to work. Hold on here. Times a 10.09? Oh, my God. There we go. So if you just like, you know, that seems like a little sloppy for me, right? You're a minimal at heart or in reality? Just curious. Minimalist at heart. I think as we get older, I don't know. I think I'd like to be more of a minimalist. Actually, you know what? I just like this damn. Sorry, guys, family friendly here. I would just like this crappy, cheap spring-loaded pile of garbage to work. <clears throat> watch it, Watch it with those Anglo-Saxon words there, guys. 
Anglo-Saxon words. What do you? Did you used to read Mad Magazine as a kid? Yes, I did. Never lost the attitude. All right. Hmm. All right. So, not sure. I'm thinking. The plot thickens. Of course, most of this won't even be in the, the matting. I'm interested in trying something else out. Well, thank you. What, me worry? Oh, my God. Mad Magazine was the best back in the heyday. I'd go with my, <clears throat> go with my dad down to the uh, Salvation Army downtown building, the, 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 the store. I'd go pick up those Spy versus Spy, Dayberg, and what was it? Mort Drucker. They always made fun of the movies. They always made fun of the movies, and yeah, they made fun of them. You couldn't do that today because somebody get there. Somebody would get their knickers in a twist or something, you know. All right, I want to play around with this just a little bit here. They would, uh, the movie company would try something like they would, they would, they would sue. They would sue because. You're appropriating our intellectual property. Well, this this did not work. This did not work. So let's bring back what we had. I can do it here. It's all these uh, movie reviewers these days. You know, my wife saw, uh, what's this movie here with Kate Blanchett? The Todd Field movie of Tor or Tar or I, I can't. She saw that recently on the whatever channel, Netflix, and she liked it. She thought it was really good. She only saw it because she'd heard about this scathing review by the New Yorker that went viral and i was like you know well do you know the name of the reviewer of the of the of the movie from the new yorker and she's like no and i was like well there you go you, it doesn't matter damn reviewers i mean the last reviewer was what roger ebert he's been dead forever he ruined it he ruined and and syndicated uh, uh newspapers ruined um Movie criticism, because, you know, back in the day, every somewhat major newspaper had their own reviewer, and a lot of them were quite good. Here in Des Moines, we had Joan Bunky, and I worked at a movie, I worked at an art movie theater in high school. She'd come in all the time, and she quoted me once, not by name, but, but just asking my opinion about the movie. I like Joan. She's uh, long gone. She was also the uh, uh, the uh, theater critic too. Remember, remember when you know, Des Moines had a theater critic and a movie critic, and 
And then when she like she retired or whatever, she got replaced by you know, some kid or whatever. We need to attract the youth. No, you need to have kind of an honest reviewer. And then that went out the window. And then every newspaper would just bend over to whatever Roger Ebert was talking about. But which, you know, now in retrospect looks Amazing, considering the 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 clickbaity attitude that movie reviewers have these days. They just all look like they've been paid off by the studios to, you know, be obsequious. <laughs> have I read my mouth enough? I, you know. But uh, I just, you know, I don't even, I never look at newspapers anymore. My parents still get the paper and I'm just like, why do you, why do you get this? It's about the size of a Kleenex. It's about as thick. It's about what it's good for. What did I do over here? Scraping through. Let that. I think I'm just. I think I'm worrying it to death here. But I'm not quite done yet. Not quite done. Not quite done. So those days are over. I mean, you can go out to whatever Rotten Tomatoes, and you got. That disparity between the the reviewers and the readers. What what else accounts for it other than you know they got the the, the reviewers have their marching orders. Pay to play. Right. I don't know. I tell you what's fun is uh, what did I see recently? Uh, it was a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago. It was um, it was uh, Kate Blanchett and Todd Field in the Criterion Closet. So they're like talking about movies and picking things out. That was an interesting exchange. I always like the Criterion Closet. I really got to resubscribe to that channel again. There's so many wonderful movies, the classics and foreign and everything like that. That's that's my thing. I've always been into that. Always, always been into that. People who take the paper, still the ones where you write the checks. <laughs> yeah, yes, <clears throat> yes, yes. And uh, still writing the checks, which, you know, yes, <laughs> all I can say is yes, that happens. But uh, listen, I'm, uh, this is getting a little bit, uh, I'm going to, I got to let this dry. I got to let this dry here, but, but here's the, everybody's got a big butt, right? So here's the but, is that I got the paper to adhere on there. That's great. I'm going to let it dry. I'm, I, 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 the words are seeping through. That's great. I'm going to come back through and kind of rework this tomorrow night here. But um, um, I think I'm, I think I'm, a Place in the Sun is a classic. Ever seen it? Uh, that That's, um. Uh, place in the sun is uh, uh, yeah I've seen I know the cover I know the cover uh, I don't if I saw it I saw it a long time ago but um, it's it's not James Dean it's the other guy I can't remember I can't remember off the top of my head I almost went and saw Casablanca tonight it was playing down about 25 miles away in a movie theater that occasionally plays the classics. I mean, I can watch it anytime. 
Montgomery Clift. Yes. Montgomery Clift and Liz Taylor. Yes. <laughs> not, not James Dean. Well, who else would it be? Montgomery Clift. Of course. I just couldn't remember his name off the top of my head there, but, uh, yeah, I was going to watch Casablanca tonight, but that's like, ah, I don't want to drive all the way there. I could, you know, I've seen it so many times. It's, it's so great. Casablanca. Close. Yeah. It's close. Liz Taylor. Oh. She turned whoa. Turned uh whoa, what a mess. Um yeah, uh yeah, so I didn't go see Casablanca tonight, but uh love that movie. Just you know, Rick is you know. Why isn't he everybody's hero? Rick, Rick's the best, right? Old Humphrey Bogart, Humphrey Bogart, and uh, yeah, 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 we have, uh, the the Louis, Louis Renault, the uh, the you know, round up the usual suspects. All right, I'm gonna go chill out. I did so much today; it was absolutely crazy. So I'm gonna. This is a mess, but I got that on there, and that's all we. That's all that that really matters here. So I'm gonna. Head out for the evening. Thanks, everybody, for showing up here. A nice crowd. Talk to you tomorrow night.